Hey everybody, welcome back to the final video of my making of a SOG uh, Special Forces Soldier series. And um, in this video, we're going to do some final refinements over the next 20 minutes or so, and then we're going to dive into the print prep stage. So we're going to dynamesh everything together, make it all one continuous mesh, and then shell it and scale it and send it off to print. So uh, if that interests you, please don't forget to do me a solid and like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, we'll get cranking on this. So my first impressions are I'm going to play with these uh, these wrinkles a little bit. I'm not going to spend too much time nitpicking over things, but um, right now they're looking a little bit too much like like a plastic bag, and I don't I'm not 100% sure how to fix that, but we're going to just see what we can do here, just real quickly, and. We might get a little crazy, a little zany with it, because when I'm looking at reference of some of these uh, these BDUs or these battle dress uniforms, it looks like it's a thicker fabric. Um, it kind of tends to bunch up all, all the way up to the knee area. So we're going to just try to achieve that just a little bit better. She's my Damien, Damien Sander brush, excuse me, uh, Damien Sander and Smooth to try and get these things cleaned up a little bit. And then also interspersing some age polish. Wrinkles are easily, um, easily the hardest <laughs> thing to sculpt, I think, to make them look natural. And with our, our character being a little bit stylized, I don't think it's a huge deal. Um, but, you know, you could always pull this guy into fancy simulation software like Marlis Designer and, um, and run your sim there and then bring that detailing back in. And a lot of times I find that that actually saves you time if you know it, if you know it really well. But uh, I'm being kind of lazy, and also I kind of want these just to not look perfectly simmed. So, really just trying to break up like the smooth uh, profile. So we don't have this one smooth line here. And then we can actually probably continue this seam all the way down. But instead of using that, I'm gonna use uh, my other favorite slash type uh, brush right here in the slash folder uh, right here. And let's just drop our intensity down just a little bit and then just run that all the way down. And then rerun a, let's rerun a dynamo. Mesh, excuse me. Get the hiccups. So we're running a Dynamesh. I think we probably lost a little bit of detail there. So I'm going to crank my resolution to something like 400 and re-Dynamesh. Okay. You'll, no you'll notice now, like my boots and my pants are now combined, which is which is fine for now. I'm starting to see these polygons here. So let's uh, let's try and clean that up just a little bit. The other distinct feature of these pants is they did have like a, they do have a, like this here. Um, it's got clay buildup. They got this kind of a seam going on down the side. Usually they're a larger seam, so this might help our pants not to look so much like whatever material it might actually help us out just a little bit. And remember to accentuate the detailing for your print. So you're actually going to see this stuff. the side of the leg here. It's kind of awkward little S bend here. We're going to use the snake hook and straighten that out a little bit. Okay, just confirming I had my symmetry on there. I'm going to fix this guy up a little bit too. This is looking weird. 
Just while you know, knowing, realizing that I think some of this stuff is hidden under packs and gear and whatnot. Back to my Damien Standard brush. Gonna carve this guy back in. Put it back into submission here. And then using my standard brush, I'm going to add some subtle, like, kind of rippling. Yeah, so a lot of that was hidden underneath the pockets, and uh, which reminds me, I was going to clean up the back of this pocket too, this is looking weird. A little bit weird. Just going to grab that uh, slash brush again, see if we can't bring back some of this. Oops. And let's actually, let's run a Dynamesh on this, let's crank it. Complete lower and then crank it to like 500 or 600 and run a Dynamesh and see what that gives us. Okay. Oops. Made a mistake here. Make sure your symmetry is on this detailing. Switching back to Damien Standard. Just kind of introducing. It's looking a little bit polygony, but, um, Some of that stuff's not gonna show up. And then just to like bring these back to a point here, the corners of these pockets, I think it's gonna help the aesthetic. Sharpen those up a little bit. This awkward little S bend here. So I'm holding Alt to pop that detail out. And switching over to uh, H-Polish, I'm going to try and crank my intensity. Sometimes H-Polish can do some fun things as you're running along. Oops. Snake hook. And then I think that's good on the pockets for now. I can guarantee this little subtle detail, these little details right here aren't strong enough to, to show up. So really kind of push those in as much as we can. I mean, you could go pretty crazy with this. I'm just trying to wrap this guy up in this video, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna crank too much longer on it. I had a friend tell me that watching uh, watching me ZBrush was kind of therapeutic, like kind of calming, as long as I'm not swearing or cursing or losing my mind. But he said that he could do it all day long. It's, I mean, it's got some weird deforming going on, but uh, I think it's good for now. I want it to pop out just a little bit. I just imply that there's it's loaded with gear and that's kind of. I think we're getting there. All right, cool. Uh, let's actually pull them up just a little bit too. And then the next thing I was going to do was clean up or add some little uh, contact points here at the bottom, at the base of the suspenders. And so I'm going to go to my trusty uh, curve tube brush and turn symmetry on and then draw those. I think they kind of go like this, kind of similar to our belt buckle that we did the other day. Let's make it a little bit smaller.
So do that, and then we'll grab our snake hook, oops, scale up our size and kind of push those back in. And then fix our shape just a little bit. It's looking uh, a little goofy. Just come in and smoothen that out a little bit. And then let's inflate. Whoops. Go to move topological and keep working that guy. So let's mask this guy off and then uh, center a pivot. Oh. Wait a minute, what am I doing? This guy. And let's rotate this guy into place here. Use that. It's kind of looking like it's uh, connected there, which is good, but let's scoot those up a little bit in Y. Symmetry turned on, we'll pull those up. And then they actually connect to the, I believe the, like the butt pack right here. So we're gonna grab our uh, curve, what am I gonna use here? Curve strap, snap and then draw these guys out. Let's just draw it out to about right here. Get them a little bit wider. And then I'm gonna bring those up so we can see those. Okay. Inflate those out a little bit, give them some thickness. And then I'm gonna use my, again, my trusty curve tube to add some little links there. Draw those around like so and you shape those just a little bit Oops. click left click off of those to get rid of the rig or the curve i should say i like to call it a rig because i kind of come from a maya background and traditional vfx background okay so we got the loops there which are cool and now we just need to alt left click over to these guys and try and connect these guys somehow that might be easier said than done let's just uh I think this guy's in a good spot, but let's get these guys into place here. It's gonna be a little bit awkward because they're rotated the same. Using my move topological to just grab these guys, put those guys back into place. And uh, let's inflate these guys together. Fact. We'll just do this real quick. Get me a picky boot, split hidden, get those out of the group, out of the, uh, away from the strap so we can do some dynamesh work real quick. Give these guys this connection here. Definitely getting it picky. I mean, I don't know how these things really work, but I think it'll look legit when we okay. and they're gonna be tiny. Okay, so they've got his little hooks now. Clean, clean this whole area up a little bit. They're all kind of bunched together. Let's get these grenades back. Like so. We're right, just gonna pretty much hide that clip, all the hard work we just did all together. All right, cool. So those are looking good now, I think. And um, I think everything will print. Fingers crossed, these guys might be these little straps. Okay, sweet. They're still. Let's inflate these guys out just a little bit. We're thinking of. We're in print phase right now, so let's inflate things and make sure that things are gonna hold up. Inflate these guys out. 
Use move topological and kind of bring those guys out just a little. Okay, cool. And I think that's a wrap on the final detailing of this guy. The other thing I was thinking too is that he, this strap needs to go underneath the suspenders actually to make it work properly. Underneath this shoulder strap there. So we'll just uh, try and get this guy to appear to kind of pop up on top. It's a little bit awkward. Oh, okay. Cool. And cool. And if you guys want to see uh, how things are looking, you know, with uh, with shadows, you can do a quick BPR render. So we'll just uh, click this little button up here and see what see what happens with it. So that's cool. It's kind of nice to, and it informs, I think, the sculpting a little bit to be able to see. Um, so all I did there was I just moved my light source up just a little bit and then came over here to render shadows. I'm going to blur my shadows just a little bit and increase my strength and maybe my rays just a tiny bit and just hit BPR again. Let's we'll see what that's looking like. Cool. Now his eyebrows are catch catching some nice shadows and things are looking pretty, pretty interesting. Um, but it also draws attention to you know things that you can maybe fix. So his his knuckles on his hands are still looking pretty mushy. So I think I'm going to work on those just a little bit here for the next few minutes. So we're still almost at our 20 minute mark here. So I'm just going to bring out these knuckles and kind of pull out these little these little tendons that come out. Obviously we don't want to push it too hard, we don't want to have old man hands, but this guy does he does tough work, you know, he works with his hands, so it's I'm gonna make those look a little bit tougher, less, less mushy. You could get crazy with it and you could get in there and sculpt in some fingernails. That detail's not gonna not gonna work out for me, so. It's looking a little bit better. Come over here to this hand and work on these knuckles. The reason I had to do this without symmetry is because it's obviously asymmetrical. The hands are doing different things. solo and see where things are fitting so yeah his hands way out of place here let's um use our snake hook and scale it up a good size and then to kind of try to get these things this knuckle should actually be underneath the trigger guard and his finger should be outside of the trigger area so we're gonna rotate this guy up structure underneath and the other thing I was gonna clean up is this little tiny area right here and this little bone nub deal. Okay. And uh I 
His thumb also is looking super wonky. So let's um, use the move topological and try to bring that around this side of the grip. And it's obviously going to deform the thumb in a weird way. So we're going to have to kind of you know, ro rotate around it and give it some, some more volume. And none of this is going to be seen right here. So we're good here. So uh, his thumb has got to do a good amount of wrapping around. So let's do this. Let's just mask it off. Turn our RGB down and feather that edge a little bit. Invert our selection and redraw our transpose joint thing here and just bring that thumb out this way. A good amount. So now we're starting to get around the other side. The only reason I'm doing this is because you might see the thumb you know, on this side of that pistol grip. Okay, I think that's good for now. Bring the thumb down. Let's bring the thumb down this way just a little bit. And then I'm just going to use the inflate brush and give it some volume. We kind of squashed it out. I'm going to do the same with this finger here, the index finger, the trigger finger. And turn on turn solo off. Looks like it's got kind of a weird shape. Clean that up. And okay, I think it's uh, I think it's pretty much there. So let's hit save. And um, nitpick a little bit more on these pants, maybe. Okay, so now let's start thinking about how we're going to combine this all together. Um, on, honestly, it's, it's all going to be combined together, so it's going to be one geo. So right now I like to, because we're going to get pretty destructive, we're going to, we're going to version up into version 14. And if you'd like to, you could add a little note here. You could say, you know, combined or something to that effect so that you know, like, okay, at version 14, we, we got crazy with it. So I'm going to merge all the packs down to one layer first. This guy, so many. This is our our backup grenade. We're just gonna hit delete on that guy. We don't need it anymore. Uh, we got our grenades here on this layer. Our smokes and flashbangs on this layer. We're gonna delete this guy that was in the inside. Let's make sure though. Yep. So delete that guy. That's a okay. Let's merge this little buckle up to the packs too. That's fine. And as you do this, you do kind of want to keep an eye on, on your rough poly count just to be safe. Because as you're merging these down, you're combining all these polys together. And so sometimes it's worth actually um, you know, rerunning a Dynamesh to just um, to, to just unify your geometry and make sure it's all like a resolution that's, that's not going to kill you. So maybe I'll, I'll crank this to like 400 and something and re-Dynamesh and see what happens with that. I still want it to be dense because I don't want to lose my all my detailing, um, but I think something like this is probably going to be fine. So now this is all combined together. All my buckles, everything, are, everything's combined. I have that. I'm going to straighten this guy out. Okay. Yeah, those are looking cool. Uh, turn on our off solo mode and continue to combine, combine. That's the watch. So let's just combine that down to the, the body geo for now. And the shirt can be combined. Merge that guy down. Body and the, sh and the clothing can be merged down. This one's going to get wild. And then we have the pockets here. So let's combine that as well. I, f I think I'm going to add a little bit of thickness to these guys just to be safe. And those buckles. So I'm just going to go to deformation and do an inflate. Oops. Sometimes you got to click on that thing a few times. Okay. 
All right, let's do a dynamesh on those real quick and then try and smooth out some of the faceting. I know this is kind of a backwards way of working, but it is what it is. And then I'm gonna actually just run a seam like right down that edge right there like that. All the way down. Standard to do this. Okay. Yeah, I can nitpick. It's all hidden anyway. Okay. Uh, so that's good. Come back to our sub tools, and let's get this guy combined down to the body geo for now. And let's. Let's do a quick Dynamesh on this just to make sure that everything's looking good. We'll leave it at 512, see what that looks like. Ooh, it's pretty heavy. Thinks I should have saved before doing this. So I actually had to pause the recording for a second because it took a while. I'm gonna undo that what I just did and drop it down to like three something and then re dynamesh. Try to keep it all at a reasonable poly count and maintaining our detail. Okay, so I got everything dynamesh together. The other thing I was looking at while it was doing that was I I could add a little bit of detail here in these pockets. Just crank these seams. And then add these little guys. Come on like so. And use the standard brush to kind of introduce some wrinkles. And then I can definitely clean up this area. So let's do this. Let's run a seam. Re-emphasize our seam that we made earlier. We got kind of mushed. And then these guys have these like you know, shoulder straps that come up like this, I think. And then I'm gonna use clay buildup to run along the edge of that. and then H polish to kind of push some of that back. Ideally, you probably should have masked this area and then popped that out more instead of this workflow. So it's probably a less effective workflow, but it's good enough for the girl I go with. Size some of these little armpit wrinkles. And let's make sure that things are working okay over here on this side. It looks like our symmetry has been changed because we did repose that arm, so we're going to have to do this real quick on this side too. Oops. Okay, 
It's like we're pushed in super close, you know. Things look kind of weird, but once you scoot, once you scoot back, it's gonna work fine. You can even add some seams like going along this guy. And again, it's totally you know printer dependent. If your printer can handle this, great. It's gonna be cool to see, but if not, then it's not worth it. Okay, now solo. So a lot of that hard work is covered by these giant straps, but hey, it's fine. It's all good. Um, bring back our little points on the corners there. And then um, add some little bit of wrinkles down here. Solo, just get stuff out of the way here. I'd just be thinking, you know, like, which way is this fabric pulling? Because the strap is right on top of it. Which way would that be wrinkling? Oops. And then remember to go in and out with your detailing, not just, you know, one way or the other. Additive and subtractive sculpting is really important. Okay, I think that's kind of working a little bit better. And let's do a, let's do this, let's do a snake hook and kind of pull, it looks like it, there's a big gap back here. So let's give him some mass to his back area. Try to keep the straps in place as best we can without having to alt tab over to those. Um, but that's looking a lot better. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit save and continue to merge our subtools down. So we can merge the hat down, that's fine, to the body. And then I think here is included in that too. And then let's get uh, let's get this guy you know what I think I'm gonna do, and you're gonna hate me for this. I'm gonna add a buckle here real quickly. And I think I'm just gonna steal. I'm gonna steal my buckle this time around. So I'm gonna create a little gap there, go to delete hidden and close holes. And now we've got this guy separated. And um, I just wanna, I just want to, you know, I wish I could get rid of these holes. This guy, let's do that, get rid of those. And H polish those out. Okay, so now we can come over here to, I think there's like a IMM clothing buckles here. And let's see if we can get one of these guys to look all right. And then um, in order to get that to work, we're gonna have to duplicate that inner buckle. So we've got the, we've got the two. Yeah, it's looking cool. So let's do this. Let's go to Polygroup Auto Group and get access to this guy here. Control Shift Left Click on that guy. Uh, actually, clear our masks. Mask just this guy. Oops. We're gonna make sure that our RGB is all the way cranked, and then intent, uh, invert that selection. And then we have to just like just make it have some kind of logic here. So. I mean, I don't know if this makes any sense. I think what we're gonna have to do actually is grab, let's do this. Let's grab this guy. <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll pull this guy up and over like so. 
and have that kind of come through like a traditional belt. Uh, but I'm actually going to split hidden, getting into the weeds again here, I apologize. It's going to be a longer video, but it's going to look better. So split hidden, get these guys out, and merge these back down in. These buckles down. And then I'm going to grab this edge here using my mask lasso and continue to pull this guy through like so, so we can wrap that guy up. And re mesh, clean it up. And then I, I think we should definitely, um, you know, kind of move this to like a point. Or maybe not, let's keep it flat because I think that's more like the style of the belt and then we'll just add a seam that goes like this right here. Okay, and then I think the last thing we're going to do is just uh, do an extract here. Subtool down here to extract, and extract, too thick, extract, just to accept, and then we can just come down, clear our mask and do an inflate. And then uh, redynamize this little camper and clean it up just a little bit with the clip curve. There we go, now we've got like kind of a little strap here that's holding that guy down and into place. Cool, so merge that guy down, merge this guy down. First thing I'm gonna do a subtle inflate on that guy, make it to like five, and merge that guy down. So now all this belt is all combined. Just keep merging, merging. Doesn't really matter at this point which goes where, because it's all gonna go to the same place. We'll leave the base though in its own little spot. A little sub tool for now because we're going to do a little bit of work on that. We're getting close. Turn off solo mode. I guess we get the packs all combined. Let's combine those down with the grenades. And do the uh, shoulder pads. It's fine. Everything's fine. Put our 40 mic mics and then down to our hero character and then our looks like a gun anything I want to change on this guy is it cool the tape worked out really nicely um, yeah pretty happy with that gun let's merge that down and lastly merge down our belts Okay, so now I'm gonna take a moment here and run a, I'm gonna save this. And let's re mesh everything into one mesh. So this might take a bit. Let's click on, we'll do about 400 resolutions. It's all scale dependent, however big your character is in real world scale. If it's really large, if this is like an actual six foot character, which I doubt you'll be working in and feet in ZBrush, so that, that's gonna completely hose you. 
Right. So I'm going to do this and redo this and see if we lose any detail. This is perfect, I think. This is good. Okay, so now all of our meshes combine together. So we have no um, separate topologies within our, our main character. It's all kind of shrink wrapped. If you look really closely at the edges, you can see that it's all kind of shrink wrapped together. So that's, that's what we want. Um, and now I think I want to do a. Let's add a little bit of bagginess to this, a little less thigh gap here. I get, I, I get it. Thigh gap is sexy, but. Minimize that just a little. Okay. All right, hit save. And we don't want to print this in a solid piece, right? So the way that we're going to um, do this is uh, we're going to put a shell on the inside of this model. And it's a fairly easy process, but it does it is a little bit time consuming. Looking at the bottom of his feet, his feet are a little bit deformed weirdly. So I'll try to fix that. It's a bit better. All right, so the way I'm going to achieve this, going to hit save, and then um, what you do is you come over here to one of the insert mesh primitives, and I usually choose a cylinder. And then if you turn off symmetry and come down here to like the bottom of this heel, you can hold Alt and then drag out a cylinder. And as a subtractive mesh, so um, that's why you hold Alt, and then scale it and kind of like make sure that it's intersecting into that shoe a good. You know, if this was all millimeters, we'd push it in about three or four millimeters, make sure that it's going all the way in, and then clear our mask. And then um, you're going to come over here now to thickness and crank this to like maybe 26, and then click Create Shell. And this can take a long time to uh, to calculate, so I might pause the video. This can take anywhere from, you know, depending on how high res your geo is, it can take between 15 to 20, maybe 30 minutes. So I may pause and just let this cook. Okay, so fair warning, uh, I did have a, a crash because uh, Zebras just couldn't handle it. So I think the issue might have been that my poly count was just too high in general. So I'm actually going to come to Dynamesh and just drop this down to like the 300 range and then rerun that Dynamesh. And then we'll try to do another insert cylinder and, and shell that guy again. So again, I'm going to come back to uh, primitives and then do a cylinder and then turn off symmetry. Just do the one side here, holding alt, going to left click and drag a cylinder and then um, pull that guy out. But again, just make sure that it is intersecting with your geo a good amount. <clears throat> Clear your mask and then come over here and do like a, uh, do a 26 this time and click on, I'm gonna do a save, and then do, you know what it actually did there, is it deactivated my Dynamesh after a save, so that sucked. Come on ZBrush, gotta figure that out. All right, so we'll re-Dynamesh. At 300, re-Alt left click our cylinder, and just make sure that's going in a good amount. It just has to be enough that it's gonna it's gonna be thick enough to penetrate that in inner that inside shell. So clear the mask and then at 26 we'll hit create shell and then I will pause here. Okay, so I let that cook for a good um, about 30 minutes. And you'll see that there's actually that cylinder's boolean uh, been subtracted out of that mesh. And usually you can see up into the shell, and I don't know why it's done this this time around. Um, 
but it did actually do the shelling and you can kind of see this is the inner shell here but that's not going to work for us um, honestly I think it's just too thick so I'm going to I'm going to undo our shelling and then drop our thickness amount so I'm going to go to just hit control control Z come back to where our cylinders at there right there and then I'm going to, I'm going to um, drop it down to like maybe tw we'll say 20 for now and then click uh, create shell okay so it's run its process and it's basically it, it's done the same thing it's been pretty inconsistent of late but what I'm going to do is just cut this all through and we can see so it's it's given us a shell um, it just doesn't have a release hole for where the resin can come out so that might be a little bit tricky to uh, to get um, but it is technically shelled so I think I am just gonna run with it and see if it works and see if it actually prints it as, as, as a hollow as a hollow mesh <clears throat> so the next stage in the process is just I'm gonna save as and do a I'm gonna version up and this one I'm gonna call like shelled version 15 Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually decimate our geo. So we need to drop the poly count down because it's right now it looks like it's it's a little bit high. It's about 5.3 million polygons. So we'll come up here to uh, our Z plugin, our Z uh, decimation master, uh, Z plugin decimation master, and then do a still set it to like 25%. And do a pre-process and this can take a little bit of time as well probably about 10 to 15 minutes okay so the pre-process is completed it took about uh, about five minutes to do so now we have to actually just come back here and it's a it's a redundancy but we just have to create uh, click this decimate current button and this usually takes uh, quite a quite a bit shorter time period it's probably a few seconds it'll be done and now if I hit shift F on my keyboard you can see that it's <clears throat> it's added a bunch of little triangles and it's it's tried to maintain the detail that we have but it's it's dropped the poly count probably I guess you know about 25% is what we set it at so I think this is probably okay for now 2.6 we can probably make work it'll 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 make your slicing software take a little bit longer at this uh, at this poly count to get things um, to get things uh, sliced but that's not a big deal so anyway um, I think the next step is the other thing I wanted to warn you about too is uh, I don't recommend trying to sculpt on this unless you absolutely have to because we've lost our poly counts so you really want to do your final touch you know your final touches and your, your um, final detailing uh, during the dynamesh phase and then wrap that up by the time you've moved into decimation so just a, just a fair warning there and the next and final thing we're going to do is <clears throat> come down here to our fancy base and run a dynamesh on the base. Let's crank the resolution just a little bit, maybe turn on polish. And then I don't want this to print solid because that's just a big waste of resin. So we're going to shell this, but we're going to do that differently. So I'm going to duplicate this. Um, switch over to my transform tool and then turn on transparency and kind of actually turn off solo and then drop this down in Y and uh, this is going to be our subtractive mesh that we're going to use so we just want to make sure that this is shelled and what you're going to do is just click on this little button here to make it a subtractive mesh and then come down to polygroup switch over to group as dynamesh sub and then um, come back up to this top guy Make sure that our Dynamesh button is still on and then merge that down. And once those are merged down, you can just control left click, drag a rectangle and it'll it'll uh, subtract that other mesh out of there. So. so now we have kind of a hollow base that we can print this guy on and you can essentially, let's just run the Dynamesh on, or the decimation on this too, just do a pre-process current and this one should be pretty fairly quick. Okay, so then we'll come back and do a decimate current. <clears throat> and now we've got our base that's been uh, decimated down quite a bit. So it's about 300,000 faces, which is still a little bit hefty. So I'm gonna do a 
I'm gonna drop this to like 20% and then run a rerun or pre-process. And usually it uh, it pre-processes exponentially quicker each time you run that. And then decimate, and now we've got a significantly lower poly base. So now we could just make sure that his feet are contacting the base. Let's go into the, this view here, and we'll have to actually do a little bit of modeling. This is a no-no, but this is what we're gonna have to do. So we'll just pull down the tips of these boots, the toes of these boots down, so they're going to make contact with that base. And in hindsight, I probably should have added some tread in there too, because I think that would have been interesting. Looks like his heels are kind of an awkward shape, so we'll fix that. If you're making broad adjustments, like large adjustments, this is fine to do in, in decimation. Um, I just, I don't recommend doing like fine detail work. Okay, awesome. So this is our character. Um, all decimated up and ready for print. It's nice and chilled and uh, you could still make a few subtle adjustments if you'd like. Overall, pretty happy with this guy and how things have turned out. So I think uh, the next step here is let's just bring in our scale cube. So I've I've got uh, geometry that I pre-scaled to real-world scale, and I'm going to link that to uh, to the drive folder in the description below, so you can just download those scale cubes and not have to worry about this yourself. But I have like a, a two millimeter cube. I have like a six foot male cube. I have uh, the six inch cube, which is one that I like to use because. Um, I'm not going to be super nitpicky about the actual scale of this guy. I mean, obviously there's parts that you need to have like very precise, but for me, I just want to be want this guy to be you know, roughly probably about five inches or so. So if you turn on poly frame on this guy, you can see the inches. <clears throat> so we'll scale this guy up just a little bit here, and he's just above, uh, just just over five inches. Five, you know, one, two, three, four, five. You know, it's about five and, and uh, three eighths of an inch or so. So um, I think I'm good with that for now. And so the next part of the process is just make sure that um, everything is in its own poly group. So hit Control W because right now we have the base and the body in the separate poly groups. So just make sure everything's um, in the same poly group. And then see that two or three times. Come over here to export and then just do an export of your model. I'll make like a 3 underscore print folder, and then do, this is this is great. Thompson shelled 15. You could even put like you know five inch. And hit save. And that's pretty much it. So that's the entire uh, ZBrush process making this character. Um, Maybe I'll do a follow-up video here after this and just show you all how the print turned out. But for as far as the series goes and the tutorial series, uh, we're pretty much pretty much done. So uh, again, if you guys were happy with this, if you, if you uh, were able to follow along, let me know what things I can improve in my instruction and my teaching. And um, super exciting! This has been this has been a fun process. So like, comment, and subscribe, and then uh, maybe let me know what you want me to make next in the comments, and uh, we'll. We'll see you in the next video.